Dear uh, delegates of the World Congress of Angel Investors, um, you know uh, in our official uh, program uh, we announced that we would host one of the most wealthiest uh, men of Turkey and uh, a Fortune 500 guy and who made his three billion dollars uh, wealth from scratch. You are really, Mr. Özyeğin, a very good role model, not just for Turkish entrepreneurs, for all entrepreneurs and for all, I think, professional people in the world. Uh, but, of course, such kind of uh, wealthy man's programs may change in the last second. <laughs> so, uh, but Mr. Özyeğin uh, wanted uh, to convey his message to all Congress members from all around uh, the world. So uh, we decided to make this video message for you. And so now I want to jump uh, to Mr. Ozi. Mr. Ozi, it is your turn now. Yes. Thank you for uh, inviting me to this very important Congress in Istanbul. Unfortunately, as you mentioned, uh, I ended up uh, with a scheduled conflict. I have to be in Germany during those dates. But I'm delighted to be able to uh, address the distinguished members of the uh, World Congress of uh, Angels the, over the video message now. I didn't really start uh, my bank that I founded from scratch. I actually started my life with a scratch because my uh, father, my late father, gave me a thousand dollars and said, Husnu, now you're going to the States for your undergraduate degree. I was 17 and a half. And that's how I started life with a thousand dollars. After that, I was completely on my own. Perfect. But um, Mr. Rosie, very good success story. But the beginning of each success story is very important. Uh, if someone has nothing to lose, it is easy to take an entrepreneurial step. Because he has nothing to lose, he will take the risk. If he wins, he will win. But at the end, if he loses, however, nothing will be lost. But you were the youngest CEO of a bank in Turkey in 1977, which means you had something to lose, something important to lose for your uh, future career. If you wouldn't succeed, then a new life was waiting for you. You're right. How did you take this critical decision and how did you convince your real angel, your wife, uh, to believe in your dreams? Actually, the second bank that I managed uh, which today is still in existence, uh, Yap Credit Bank, which is owned half by the Coach Group and half by Unicredit, so it's also a public bank. Uh, I was a managing director of that bank, and that bank, uh, I, I was fortunate enough to turn that bank around. It's also in my book, in my biography that I published uh, six months ago. By the way, the English version of my biography will be out in a month or so. Perfect. And uh, for your information. Yes. And obviously, I took a risk. But my risk was a calculated risk in the sense that I wasn't developing a product whether I, uh, I wouldn't be sure of being able to sell to the, to the consumer. I decided to found a bank with a, a corporate bank uh, with only four branches and with only 150, 20 employees. And I knew that I had all the corporate relationships to bring corporate customers and CFOs and, and CEOs and owners of businesses to the bank for business. So it was a pretty low risk strategy. Uh, it was later, in later years, that I decided to go into consumer banking, collect uh, deposits and uh, then grow the bank to the size that it came. It ended up to be the fifth largest private bank. And obviously, when I turned that bank around, the upper credit, I asked my boss, 
who was also my classmate from Robert College, to give me one percent of the bank. I said I'd pay half for half a percent, and that he would I would appreciate if he funded the other half percent. He said, Houston, I don't have a system where our CEOs are shareholders. You continue with your uh, salary and bonuses and try to be happy with that. It was at that moment I decided to uh, jump into my entrepreneurship uh, venture. Perfect. Um, how uh, you launched your business, developed it, sold it, then again, I think uh, the biggest um, uh, project which came to Greece from Turkey as an investment was the was your bank of the uh, Greece history as well. actually uh, the, the sale of my bank was historical 11 years ago transaction and it still is historical because five and a half billion dollars was the largest amount of private foreign capital largest amount of foreign direct investment that flew into Turkey in cash in one chunk. It still is today in the history of the Republic. But what's also interesting is this FDI came from Greece. You know, yeah. uh, I mean, the world conception about Turkey and Greece is that Turks and Greeks are not very good friends. Actually, this is completely wrong. It's the politicians that for domestic politics, they attack each other. But uh, interestingly enough, also, what was really interesting about this transaction is that my grandparents came from the island of Crete, which belongs to Greece right now. And National Bank of Greece that bought my bank, their chairman, Mr. Araboğlu, his grandfather came from Tekirda, Thracia in Turkey, and vice chairman Yanis Pelivanidis, his grandfather came from Antalya. So this was such an interesting transaction on two sides of the Aegean Sea, right. you know. So. But I, also, I must also mention a few things about uh, what I'm doing right now in the sense that my greatest achievement was, has been really, not necessarily Finance Bank, but the fact that I found a university in Istanbul and I, again, I hope that the conference, this co uh, Congress, will be very successful and the, it will generate a lot of business between the interworking among the uh, participants. Thank you very much for the opportunity to address you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, since you uh, launched the first entrepreneurship program in a university, yes. then you believe that entrepreneurship is something that can be learned. That can be supplemented, not supplemented. learned. Because we're not talking about class learning only. We're bringing successful entrepreneurs to the, class. that, to the classroom yes. and, and, and the contacts with the entrepreneurs okay. and, and how entrepreneurs, uh, they tell most, not most of their, not their successes, but their failures also, which is of very course. important. And we also held the first failure conference in my university three years ago. So the quite what did you learn I, from your failures yes. i was there also <laughs> one of the participants <laughs> and I, we talked about our failures most people don't like to talk about their failures but i enjoy talking about my, my failures as well fantastic one yeah. of my greatest failures was to go to i have a very successful bank in russia but i said hey i have a university in turkey so maybe i can also teach english to the russians yes. uh, and i got the carlisle <laughs> System done. French, I was yes, his yes, and yes. that went under. And it was the first time that I sold a company, and when I sold it, I did not receive a penny, plus I put $1,750,000 cash into the company when I said bye-bye. <laughs> So, Russian market <laughs> is a difficult market, I think, Mr. Ozzie. Uh, Mr. Ozzie, Trump. What is your idea, personal idea? Is he an uh, entrepreneur or not? Now he's the president of the United States, but as I think, I think before he can be described obviously as an entrepreneur. Yes. Because entrepreneur, he has all the qualifications of entrepreneur. He's a high risk taker, number one. Number two, he doesn't stop investment. I mean, he, he invests uh, and borrows more than, he borrowed more than his means. Number three, he was not satisfied 
with uh, only real estate business in uh, Manhattan, but he also went into the casino business. Number four, he went all over the world. Uh, I mean, he has uh, projects in Dubai, in Scotland, in uh, Turkey, and uh, everywhere. But I'm sure. So he's, he's definitely a risk taker and entrepreneur. If, if with these all uh, qualifications, to be a student of your uh, graduate program at the Özyen University, he would be more successful, maybe. <laughs> he <laughs> also established a university and he had problems Trump with the university. Yeah, you, know, no, you are right. Trump are right. University. <laughs> so he's a lot to put <laughs> <Is> he? <laughs> That business was a failure. <laughs> you, know. you said uh, you invested in around 100 uh, companies. For um, What is your personal approach? Horse or jockey? Which one is more important? Well, to secure success. Horse or jockey? I tell you, uh, people are extremely important. Human resource. I say there are three things about a successful business. Number one is human resource. Number two is human resource. Number three is... Re and the the rest just comes. Yes. Okay? And in fact, most of the companies that I founded are from scratch also. A bank in Russia, a bank in Holland, a bank in Ukraine. All these were from scratch. Leasing companies in these countries. Insurance businesses in these countries, they were all from scratch. Maybe no. you can write a book, m uh, making a successful business from scratch. How to make it happen. This okay. is your <laughs> cup of <laughs> tea. Thank you. Um, Mr. Özyen, uh, the last question is, uh, you worked with uh, many teams in your... Investing, of course, this is what I understand, since you said, okay, human uh, power is important that investing in the right team is important. But invested by the right team is also very important for, for startups, for entrepreneurs or scale-ups. We have also many chief executive officers now uh, listening to us. And most of them, we are inviting them to join our Global CEO Alliance Club, where they are uh, going to be prepared for their new life after they are retired to go on their life as an investor, as an angel investor. Why? Because they have network when they are retired. They have a good financial package from the uh, corporate there. And they will have uh, time uh, to share their know-how uh, with startups. But they are missing only a, a important detail. Most of them don't know how to launch a business. So. Uh, what do you advise to these um, potential angel investors of the future? Uh, maybe uh, you may uh, propose them a route map to follow when they are retired to become a good investor for startups and economy of the country and economy of the world benefits more from their uh, know-how. Maybe, maybe they become a silent investor of a business angel group from now not tomorrow. They invest a few thousand dollars and learn the basic principles of the Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. I mean, that's what angel investment is all about. I mean, you know, you spread your risk. You don't invest so much, I mean, in the early stages, but you invest in 50 companies, 100 companies. One or two or three or five of them work. But obviously, after that, the angel investor has to find funding. If he doesn't have a funding for, for a larger amount, Second, then he has, to, he has to also establish a networking with the people that have the money for the next rounds and try to piggy bank. May bring potential to them. Maybe they're doing this already. They must be doing this. We have three messages. First, calculated risk. Mr. Ozin taking uh, took a calculated risk. It is very important. Se second, human power comes first. This means investing in the right team or investing in the jockey is very important. And the third, uh, CEOs of the future can prepare themselves as a silent member of an angel group and learn more about the principles, basic principles of the uh, life, real life, from corporate life to entrepreneurial life. Mr. Özeyn, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much.